<sighs> okay. <clears throat> Let's talk about the timeline of all the babies <laughs> that have been in my home, in my life, over the last year. And let's do that over some mac and cheese. Let's go. So, <clears throat> babies are asleep. I'm eating some mac and cheese. Gluten-free mac and cheese. If you didn't know, they make gluten-free mac and cheese. And it's really good. Excuse me for eating while I'm doing this, but I'm hungry. I'm just late. So, okay, here we go. There was a comment where someone asked me if I can list out and go over all the babies that were placed in my home over the last year. <clears throat> and I think the reason that people asked me that question was because if you go back to, I think it's like two videos ago. Oh yeah, it was me like three videos ago or something. If you could, it doesn't matter. Just look for the video that says goodbye baby J. And in that video, I explained why he left. <clears throat> well, in, in that video, I kept saying, let me keep cutting my head off. There we go. I kept saying, um, baby s first off and it confused <laughs> everyone everyone was like what are you talking about baby s and i was thinking like that would be really cool if like he was back with me anyway <clears throat> covid still have symptoms tested negative pcr test last weekend i'm good but those symptoms just like last anyway so I was, it was really late. I was exhausted when I was making that video and I kept saying baby yes. Fat, let's just focus on what we're doing here. So back in February of 2021, I got a call for a placement on February 4th, 2021 and that was the placement for baby S. So he comes to my home when he is seven weeks old. Mm. That's the first time I ever had a baby. They popped this seven week old baby in my home. And I literally was like, okay. And everything just like came so naturally to me. <clears throat> he was lovely, he was fun. He had like the longest hair. He's born with this full head of hair. He smiled and I watched him grow. And literally from seven weeks to just about five months. So during that time when he was about three and a half months, I got another call for a second child, <clears throat> that's baby L. He came to me, had to be in April-ish, something like that. He, so I got the call for him and I was really nervous, obviously, because he was only four weeks old and I had this other baby and <clears throat> I'm just over here like, oh my God, should I take this child or not? But they told me that, they, I, they told me one thing about his case and then when I got him, I, a whole, there was a whole nother story to his case and that didn't really work for me. And I mean, and he ended up going back to his mom anyway. So it all really worked out, out well. But, oh my God, when I got him, <laughs> he was literally so tiny, four weeks old. 
And I had no idea that like newborns were as small as they are. <clears throat> this baby was so small, I thought I was gonna break him. I was like, and then the first night he was here, my mom lives back on the East Coast. So they are three hours ahead of us. The first night he's here, it must have been like 1 a.m. in the morning. And I call her and I'm panicking. I'm like, what did I do? There's no way I could do this. There's no way. It's, it's going to be too much. And she told me, she's like, you can do this. You're fine. Relax. Breathe. And I did. And I took some deep breaths. And I don't know why after that. <clears throat> It just, it felt fine, it worked, and like... So, but then he ended up going home for, well, like very soon, I think a week or a week and a half after. So then I still have baby S, and baby S ended up going, not home to mom, but to a different foster family that had his half sibling. And everyone knows that the department wants siblings to stay together. And I, I had an issue with that at the time. I'll say that part of it was because I really wanted him to stay with me and I didn't understand like why they were doing this. I was upset that they were gonna literally take him from me and put him in this other home. He's been with me for four plus months. But at the same time, now looking back and having all the children I've had and knowing more about the system, I 100% see why they transferred him. I don't agree with how they transferred him and the process that they used to transfer him. But I do think it's best for children to be with their siblings because it's too easy to get lost in this system. <clears throat> And then, and then never have your, your siblings. And then, so I am grateful he's with his brother. So after baby S left, I was pissed. I was mad, I was sad. That was in May. <clears throat> I ended up getting her in a... <clears throat> I need Botox. Gosh. But that shit's expensive. Um, I ended up getting in a relationship and was like, I can't do this anymore. I was so mad. I got all into the relationship. Blah, 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 blah. And then we broke up. Thank God. Oh, thank God. And I ended up in, when was it? In July, I, oh, you know what? You know why I was pissed and stopped? Because after baby S, I had a total of six children. Six children I get calls for. Literally, we're bringing them to you. I get the call, we're bringing the baby to you. And the baby never, never shows up. I had social workers literally tell me, don't worry, I'll call you back and you know, I'll let you know if they're not gonna come. Never got calls back. Now I will say, I understand that they're really busy. I, I never realized like all the paperwork that goes into, first off, you're taking a child from a, from a family. Like that's a whole thing. Sometimes they have to go and find these family, these children, like they're not at their house. They could be anywhere in the state. They gotta go find them. And then they have to do all the paperwork and bring the child. It's a lot. And I didn't realize that then. So looking back, I have some grace on why they didn't call or that type of thing. <clears throat> um, so I was mad about all those. And then I stopped. Went in the relationship. July comes around. And as we're breaking up, I can remember we talked for like two and a half weeks. I was crying. And he's crying. And all this bullshit. And... When we even started talking about breaking up, 
it was literally like all my walls came down and I was like, thank God I can start fostering again. And it was like the best thing. And I, I, I already explained it. What, like I, I shared this story in the video, um, thank you for a wonderful 2021. So in that video, I shared the prayer that I had in the shower and like what made me in the moment say yes to fostering. So if you wanna see that, like I'll put the card somewhere. You can watch that video. Um, but the very next child that gets placed with me is baby R. And I'll say this, baby R came to me when he was two months old on September 22nd. I've always said baby S taught me how to be a parent. Baby R, I don't know why the connection is so different. It is just, it is a connection like nothing I've ever, ever experienced before. And I always say, baby R taught me how to be a father. They're two totally different things, whether they're biological or not. A, a parent is someone who, let's say, gets you from, a to, from point A to point B. That's what a parent does. A father, and even, I love the description, like even the Bible talks about what it means to father someone and how sometimes a coach can father someone. Um, a friend can father someone, like a, like maybe a friend of a, a father of another friend of yours or something. But it means to like shepherd them, to teach them, to encourage them, to like empower them, to uh, connect with them, to love them. And that's what I feel with, with baby R. I almost said his name. <clears throat> Obviously he's an infant, but it's little things. Like first off, the, our touch, our touch and support and love and caring for him and loving him. But it's also the little things like when he's doing tummy time and he doesn't want to do it and he's in pain because they're literally working their core out, right? encouraging him, getting down on the floor, eye to eye, smiling at him. You can do this, buddy. And maybe, you know, doing it for another five to 10 seconds with him. And now, you know, it's like something else. It's unreal. Or like when he is screaming, screaming his eyes out, being calm, like not going to that place with him because trust me, it is so easy to get so overwhelmed. But like, I literally have to hear the scream and the screech and it is at a decimal that, I'm not even exaggerating, not exaggerating. It pierces my ears <clears throat> to a point where I have to sometimes put in my AirPods, turn off transparency mode, so it's like noise cancellation, and put music on. That's how loud it can get. <laughs> And I have to let it, and he's like, I'm talking too loud. Baby just woke up. Let me put the pacifier back in. I'll be back. Okay. Oh, that was tea. All right, so oh, where was I at? So I literally have to like, when he's changing his diaper, he's screaming and pushing his arms and kicking his legs and all that jazz. And I literally have to just calm myself and just slowly get through that diaper. And it's not easy. But to me, that's what fathering someone is. Like, knowing that it's not about me, and you're doing this for them because you love them. So, yeah. So baby R comes in my life. And then, got him at two months. And then at five months, he's gonna turn six months next week. So by the time this comes out, he'll be six months. When he 
days, five months, five and a half months. I've got it. I just, I, I always knew that I want two children, whether it's fostering or adopting, I always want two children. And I thought to myself, I remember speaking to my friend, Michelle, I said, I think I'm ready for another child. And I had baby R and the next day, the next day, I get a phone call for a second child. And before I even, before they even finished tell me, telling me about the child, I was like, I'll do it. <clears throat> I just knew I would do it. So that was baby J. <clears throat> I go pick him up from the hospital, it was great. You need to see that video if you wanna watch it. When I picked him up and when he came here, he was four days old when I picked him up. The youngest child, four days old. I wasn't even nervous. I literally, I was over the moon, excited. I wasn't nervous at all, <clears throat> but then I got COVID. And in that video where I explain why he left, I, I tell you all that. I got COVID and why he left. So he leaves. And after my, like, through COVID, I have that clear mind again. And I was like, you know what? I'm ready for this. <clears throat> it's crazy. And then the next day, <laughs> the very next day, I get a phone call not from my agency, directly from the county, DCFS. I'm walking down the street and they asked me, will I take in this child? They said, you're the family friend. And I said, okay. And that is baby T. Baby T is ha not even a full half a month. He is like a week and a half younger than baby R. And that brings us to January 2022 and it is so amazing like I love the two of them together I love that they're the same age they have the same milestones but like slightly di they're very different babies they are so different in so many ways but they're also doing the same milestones um, and they entertain each other I know what I'm doing with one and I know what I'm doing with the other so didn't expect that to be almost 20 minutes, but it was because we all know I like to talk. Um, but that's it. That's the breakdown. That's the breakdown of all the babies. And um, I'm almost done my mac and cheese. <laughs> okay, bye guys. Bye.